In the last video, what we learned is how the first and second derivative of a function relate to the behavior of the graph of that function at a given point. But really, that doesn't complete our analysis. What we want to be able to do is do that analysis not at a single point, but kind of looking at the entire graph at once. It would be nice if you could look at the graph of this function and tell me all the intervals on which f prime of x is greater than zero. And if you want to go to expert level, it would be nice if you could tell me all the intervals on which f double prime of x is greater than zero. Let's see if we can do it. Let's start with when f prime of x is greater than zero. As we talked about in the previous video, f prime of x is greater than zero when the function is increasing. So my derivative is going to be greater than zero anytime this function is increasing. What does it mean to be increasing? It just means going up as you read this thing from left to right. So all throughout here, my first derivative is greater than zero. It continues to be greater than zero until I get to this point right here, the hilltop if you want, at which point I start going downhill so my function is no longer greater than zero. My first derivative is negative all the way until I get somewhere over here, at which point it starts becoming positive again. It stays positive all throughout this region until I get to my next hilltop, at which point the hiker's going downhill, therefore the first derivative is negative. There's a couple more uphill stretches. The next one starts here at zero. It's a little bit hard to draw through here because I've already kind of drawn all over this graph, but it'll stop at this hilltop, at which point the first derivative becomes negative again until I get down here. When we start our last positive first derivative interval pictured, which continues up until this point. Figuring out when your first derivative is positive is not that hard. It's just when your graph is increasing, it's the parts kind of shaded in red here. All the parts that are not shaded in this bold red are when the first derivative is less than zero. Where things get difficult is when you consider the second derivative. I want to know when the second derivative is greater than zero. Remember, the second derivative is talking about the concavity of the graph. I'm looking for places where the shape of the graph is kind of like this right side up bowl right here. More concretely, I'm looking for when the change in the first derivative is positive. Not when the first derivative is positive, but when the change in the first derivative is positive. Intervals that are concave up will either look like what's pictured in blue here or in blue over here. That's what I'm trying to find in my graph over here. So do you see any right side up bowls going on in here? I mean, sure, there's one kind of right throughout here, right? This looks like a bowl that's right side up. You can put some milk and cereal in this thing. The challenge is understanding when it switches. When does it sh switch from having this shape of a right side up bowl to the shape of an upside down bowl, which maybe you see pictured over here? Well. It's really hard to tell when the concavity switches. But if I had a ballpark where it is, I don't know, maybe somewhere in here would be where the concavity switches from concave up, what we see pictured in blue, to concave down, what's pictured in red. What about on this side? Well, now it's even harder to isolate exactly where it is, but I don't know, maybe roughly in here. Here we have a right side up bowl, and here we have the upside down bowl. Are there any other right side up bowls? Sure. I got one somewhere in here. I mean, it's clearly a right side up bowl when I get close to zero. It's a little bit harder to tell. Is it still a right side up bowl here? Or am I starting to come into this upside down bowl that I have up here? Really, the best you can do at this point is kind of ballpark when the concavity switches. As we go to the right of this point, we again see the upside down bowl. But somewhere starting, I don't know, roughly in here, we switch to a right side up bowl. And it continues to be a right side up bowl until I don't know exactly where somewhere in here, at which point it switches to an upside down bowl. I think there's a tiny bit of a right side up bowl over here way at the ends, but it's so hard to picture because the graph cuts off. But I think if we looked at this more carefully, we might see that the concavity is switching again if we had more of the graph pictured. The point that I'm trying to make is the regions pictured in blue are the regions at which the second derivative is greater than zero. And it'd be nice if you left this video with the ability to estimate those regions. And to be clear, it's just an estimate, right? If you said that this one goes to here instead of to here, or if you stopped it right here, all of those answers are perfectly correct. It's just a ballpark. But if you said that it was concave up all the way until the top here, you'd clearly be wrong. Because right here, I do not have part of a right side up bowl. This is definitely an upside down bowl going on over here. So while it's an estimate and there is a little bit of tolerance built in here, there are answers that are correct and are incorrect. I just focused on greater than zero, but maybe you could do the exact same analysis for when it's less than zero. I mean, we kind of did that analysis if you just consider the parts that are not shaded in. The parts that were not shaded in red were the points where f prime of x was less than zero, and the points that are not shaded in blue are when f double prime of x is less than zero. And maybe if you're kind of nitpicking, you might be like, well, not really, because aren't there points where f prime of x equals zero? Yeah, I guess there are. Points where f prime of x equals zero, which again get a fancy name, we call those critical points. 
would be the point that we see up here, kind of at the mountaintop, and the point that we see down here at the bottom of the valley, another one up here, another one down here, another one right here, then down here, and finally up here. If we drew the tangent line to the curve at any of these points in green, that tangent line would be horizontal. So those are all my critical points. That only leaves one piece of vocabulary, which are inflection points. Critical points happen when your first derivative changes sign, which is typically when f prime of x equals zero. Inflection points happen when your second derivative changes sign, which is typically when f double prime of x equals zero. It's hard to look at the graph and tell when the second derivative equals zero, but maybe it's easier to look at the graph and tell when the concavity switches. We're concave down in this region and we're concave up in this region, so there's some point roughly in here where my concavity switched from negative to positive. And there's another point roughly here where my concavity switched from positive to negative. In fact, the endpoints of all the different blue intervals here would be my inflection points. I don't love that they're in brown because I already used brown for something else right here, so that might be confusing, but the rest of these big points in brown, I guess, would be my inflection points. And these inflection points are all happening when f double prime of x equals zero, which again is really hard to see on the graph, so maybe it's best to locate them as the points where my concavity switches from concave up to concave down or reversed. We'll get more practice with this in future videos, so maybe I'll keep this one really short and call it good here.